So welcome to my series of painting leaves. The leaf that you can see here on my sketchbook, we've painted in another tutorial and I will link that on the top of your screen so that you can click through and watch that later. So this week we are going to be painting this uh, fiddle fig leaf, I think that's what they're called, and you can see I've swatched out my colours on a little colour chart here. I use this a lot and I will show you um, in the information card on the top of your screen how to make one yourself to make matching colours really easy. Just using a handful of colours today. These are from Mijello Mission Gold and I will link all the colours that I've chosen in the description box underneath. I've traced down my drawing. I always do this because it just means I can press on with the watercolour and this is how I trace it down from printing out my picture and I'm just using a couple of brushes here. I'm going to begin by mixing a base green colour and I'm going to be using permanent yellow with a tiny bit of cobalt blue for this. Just a smidge in here because we want this to make the initial colour of the leaf. That kind of yellow tone that you can see on the um, the areas that form the veins. That's kind of the colour that I'm looking for and that can go everywhere. And I'm adding in a tiny bit of Van Dyke green with a tiny bit of cobalt blue to create this kind of bluey green tone that we see for the highlight. Now I'm painting the highlight in first using my number eight brush and we just want to get that colour in because we can see when you're looking at that leaf, that little highlight colour is really important to retain. Now this tutorial is suitable for everybody. All levels can join in with it because I'll be showing you how to paint it in easy to follow steps. After applying that little highlight colour, I'm going to take this really bright, vibrant, yellowy green tone all over the leaf, staying within the pencil line. This is going to go over the little negative spaces of the veins that you can see because we're going to be painting in between them later when it dries with a darker colour. So we can take this everywhere apart from our highlight colour. Straight onto the paper, wet on dry. The paper that I'm using is a cold press which means it has texture to it and I really like using it because it means it's a little bit more robust and it makes application a little bit easier. So as you can see, I'm taking this colour all the way over the leaf, right up to the pencil line, using my number eight brush with that really vibrant green mix with cobalt blue with a lot of permanent yellow. I'm cleaning my brush, patting it dry, and then just blending it into the paint like this. This will give you a nice soft transition between the two colours. All the materials that I'm going to be using today I will link in the description underneath this video so check them out for yourself and if you are struggling with your colour matching let me know in the comments and I will help you out. This is Van Dyke Brown and I'm just using this in a kind of watery-ish consistency to take it over the stem. You can see how fine the point of my brush is and it really helps with applying the paint and I have better control. Everything is completely dry, so I'm using sap green and I'm just mixing it in a couple of wells here so that it's a nice bright colour. And to that, I've added a little bit of the Van Dyke green just to darken it up. Using my number two brush, I'm just using it around the little vein that we've drawn in, gently negatively painting the shape of the veins. You can see that I'm just taking care not to go all the way down the side of the leaf there because I'm going to be blending that colour into the outside edge as you'll see me doing in a moment. So once I've applied that colour as close to the vein as I dare, I want it to be nice and tight. I'm just gently merging those colours together as you can see here. Using the paint that's left on the brush. Notice how I'm taking my time to get those veins as tight as I can. So you can see now how that yellowy green tone that I applied at the beginning is forming the negative space of the veins. Negative space is when we paint around a space to give it a shape. Adding a little bit more sap green and I've added it to the Van Dyke Brown just to take a little bit of that greeniness out of it and I'm just again negatively painting around that central vein. I've got my pencil lines to guide me so I'm using the wiggly motion with my number two brush 
making sure that I stay out of that bluey green highlight that I painted on at the start. Now we do provide you with free outlines to join in with this tutorial. I will put the pencil drawing that you saw me uh, at the very start there right at the end of this video along with a reference photo. But if you would rather have a digital version which is easier to trace down, again you can have that for free by joining our free membership level on Patreon um, and I'll put details of that in the, in the description box and I'll tell you a little bit more about Patreon as I work through a little bit later on. So you can see I'm still working around those negative spaces, taking my time to create the negative shape of that vein. Every week here on YouTube we create brand new videos, mostly botanical work, so if that's something that uh, really appeals to you, you may want to consider subscribing to my channel. And if you hit that little bell on the side, you'll be notified when I upload new content and you won't miss out. Um, on our free tutorials here on YouTube. If you are enjoying this video, would you mind doing me a favour and hitting that like button? It means that YouTube um, will push it out to more people and it will really support me and help my channel grow. So I'd really appreciate it if you are enjoying it just to hit like. I'm just using a mixture of Van Dyke Brown and Van Dyke Green there just to drop in a tiny bit more of that darker value so that I can give those little elements that I'm painting a bit more shape and form. Now I mentioned earlier on that we do have a Patreon where you can join for free. It means that you can have the digital downloadable version of our outlines that you can trace down delivered weekly to your inbox. You don't have to go scrolling through to look for that outline, you can have it delivered for free. But we do also have a paid version with a few different membership levels where we paint botanical paintings in a lot more detail. You won't find any of our Patreon tutorials here on YouTube because our YouTube tutorials are indeed full length and you don't need to go over to Patreon to join that. It's for people who maybe want to improve their botanical painting skills. So in case that's of interest to you, let's when just take you a look. Patreon, you will have access to exclusive content that you just won't find here on YouTube. Whether you're a seasoned artist or just dipping your brush into botanical watercolour, you may want to join us here on Patreon where the magic happens. And with Patreon's new collections tab, it makes accessing the tutorials super easy. When you join us here on Patreon, we dive deep into the art of botanical watercolours, from vibrant blooms to fine detail, and I'm here to guide you every step of the way. We have three membership levels to suit your skill and budget, and we even have a mentorship and coaching level, so if you're serious about developing your skills, then this could be the level for you. And now you can join Patreon for free, which will give you access to all of our YouTube traceables, which will be delivered weekly to your inbox, so no more scrolling through for the images. So if you are ready to embark on a watercolour adventure, unlock exclusive content and join a community that celebrates the beauty of botanicals, hit that join button, which I will link in the description. You can leave and join Patreon at any time, so I will link, link it in the description box underneath this video if it's something that you'd like to consider joining. We'd love to see you there and it's a way that you can support my channel. Once again, I'm working around these little highlights and the little veins in the same way that I did on the other side of that leaf. Breaking it down into small segments means that it's much more doable and less stressful cleaning my brush, patting it dry and blending it out into the paper like this. I use this application method for all my paintings and I do discuss it in more detail in the video that's linked on the top of your screen. So if you want to just click through to that and watch it later, it will explain how I apply my paint in a lot more detail. I'm just dipping in between the different green shades that I've got mixed up in my palette. They are a mixture of 
sap green and sap green with a tiny bit of Van Dyke green. If you don't have Van Dyke green, which is by uh, Magello Mission Gold, you could use sap green with something like a Paralean green, or you could use a, a Payne's Grey to darken up your green if you want to. But if you are stuck on your colour mixing, um, do let me know in the comments and I will help you out. You can see here that I'm continuing painting those negative veins, just taking care to apply the colour carefully. I'm adding a tiny bit of Van Dyke green and Van Dyke brown to that darker value because I wanted the green to have a really dark tone at this point and you can see how dark that colour is. I've switched down to my number four brush. This is a fine point and it's great for finer details as you can see here. Because this layer is now dry, I'm able to add another layer on top of it blending those colours in in the way I showed you earlier on to give that natural transition between each colour. see that I'm cleaning my brush, patting it dry and blending it through in the way that I would ordinarily do. As I said, this will give your colours a really natural transition between the light shade and the dark shade without any hard edges that you can sometimes have with watercolour. If you do have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'm always on hand to answer any queries or questions, so don't be frightened to ask. I'll always be happy to help you. I'm going to continue these leaves as a series. Um, I've got quite a few different ones in mind, but if there are any other leaves that you'd like to see me paint as part of this series, do let me know in the comments. And if I have got any photographs um, that I've taken, I'd be more than happy to paint them. We have done a fiddle, fi a fiddle fig tutorial in its entirety in the past. Um, so if you want to do a full version of this tutorial, I will link it on the uh, top of your screen now. And I'll also put it at the end of this video so that you can check it out if you want to do something a little bit more ambitious or a bigger project. You can see me here once again working around that highlight. It's important that we keep that soft green highlight in place. It's also worth noting, and it's really important, that each layer is completely dry before applying the next. Of course, otherwise these, la these paints will just blur into each other and we don't want that. We want to keep these nice sharp edges. I'm adding one or two more negative spaces here. Um, you don't have to do this. You can make this as detailed or as relaxed as you want to, but I'm just showing you here that you can add a few more even at this stage. Using that darker colour, this is a mixture of Van Dyke green and sap. And once again, I'm adding a few more negative spaces with that brush, but I'm still staying out of that greeny blue highlight that we painted on at the start. If you find at this stage that your veins are looking a little bit too wide, now is your opportunity to tighten them up a little bit by just taking the brush closer to that line.
You can see how I'm blurring out those hard edges. Gently taking that darker colour into the initial washes. By using a circular motion, it just means that you have better control of your paint. So it's a really good idea to just kind of wiggle that brush into the paint so that you get that lovely soft edge. And you can keep on building up your colours because the washes are really fine. It means that you can continue to build up your colours without the worry of your watercolour paint going muddy or looking overworked. Once again, I'm adding a little bit more veining. You haven't got to do this. You can just carry on as you are. But because I'm here, um, I just wanted to show you different ways of adding negative space if you want to continue and add a little bit more detail to your painting. I'm using my blender brush. This is a stiffer brush and it has a curved point. This is really great for using damp to blend the colours together. As you can see me doing here, it's important that the brush is just damp and not wet and it's great for getting rid of any untidy edges. I'm adding Van Dyke Brown with a little bit more of the cobalt blue there just to darken up that brown colour. You could use Van Dyke Brown on its own um, I need to, because I needed to add another layer to the stem or the branch, the stem of the leaf by applying it to the right hand side only and blending it into the existing colour that we have down. Of course the colour is dry at this stage, we don't want to take this colour everywhere, we just want to put it on a certain element of that stem to give it a bit more texture. It stops it from looking flat and I'm continuing the process working down that, that stem around the base of the leaf where it hits the base of the leaf like this and once again blending those colours together with a damp brush. Gently outlining, as you can see, it just sharpens up the edge and it clears up any untidy edges. I'm just using a slightly more watered down version of Van Dyke Brown with a tiny bit of green, just to add a tiny bit more depth of colour there. And once again, outlining the outside edge of that stem, just to sharpen it up in the way that I did earlier on. more detail going on here to the outside edge just to sharpen it up and I'm doing the same to the leaf I felt that it was looking a little bit untidy around the outside edge so I'm just tightening up those edges as you can see me doing here and enhancing some of the detail around each of the veins because they are negatively painted sometimes they can look a little bit untidy so now's your chance to tidy them up by just using the dark green tone that we mixed up to sharpen up any areas that you feel are looking a little bit untidy. Remember to stay right until the end of this video where I'm going to put the reference photograph, the simple line drawing which is just a pencil line drawing for you to pause the video and you can screenshot it and print it out that way if you'd like to trace them down yourself and I have of course kept the um, reference photograph in screen as you can see just to help you understand what I'm referring to as I paint uh, this tutorial for you. Just continuing the process here just adding a bit more detail and a bit more depth I'm going to stop talking now and let you watch the rest of the video in peace listening to some hopefully relaxing music. Um, remember to like this video to hit that like button if you've enjoyed it 
and hit subscribe um, if you enjoy this kind of painting tutorial. You can see me here just lifting out one or two more veins with my brush and I'm going to be painting around those. Thank you very much for watching, stay until the end and I'll see you next week.